Dominique Dunn, a 21-year-old actress who was ecstatic when she received a role in what would be one of the biggest blockbusters of the year. But could this role have been the cause of her downfall? And was her resulting death because of a Hollywood curse? Or was she simply the victim of a very mysterious man who held a very mysterious power to sway the justice system? This is Ashley with Ashley Says So and I am back with another Old Hollywood Scandal video. And before we get started, I need to give a special shout out to Miss Brenda Bunch. Thank you so much for purchasing these gifts for me off of my Amazon wish list. They will definitely assist me in my journey to lose weight. And I also want to say for anybody who would like to purchase merch, you can purchase your merch right now at AshleySaysSo.net. Now, let's go ahead and get to this disclaimer so we can go ahead and talk about the scandal of Dominique Dunn. I'm not sure what's true or false in this video. I take gossip and tea and scandal from online, from books, from magazine, from word of mouth, and I ball it all up and I tell you guys a story. The whole video is for entertainment purposes. I have done my research. Make sure you do yours. Now, let's get to the video. Dominique Ellen Dunn was born on November the 23rd, 1959 in Santa Monica, California. Her mother's name was Ellen, aka Lenny Dunn, and her father's name was Dominique Dunn. And the Dunns had at least one more child on top of Dominique. Now, growing up, Dominique's childhood wasn't really typical because she was a Hollywood kid. Her mother, father, godmothers, godfathers were all involved in the Hollywood arts, whether it be writing, acting, producing, directing, etc. So because of this, Dominique was basically one of those children who were kind of destined to go into show business. And that's what Dominique did. By the time she was a teen, she was starring in various stage plays. And by the time she was 19, she actually had booked her first film role. And that film was called Diary of a Teenage Hitchhiker. Now, Dominique was not the star of this film, but it was just the push she needed to secure more work. And work was coming fairly quickly. In 1980, she got several supporting roles in shows like Lou Grant, Family, Heart to Heart, and Fame. And Dominique was happy, of course, because her career was starting off with a boom, but most of this new work was TV work. And she didn't really join acting to be a TV star, she wanted to be a film star. And in 1981, she got a shove, honey, not a push, she got a shove in the right direction because she was cast in a movie that would become a box office is smash and that movie was poltergeist now when it was released poltergeist was talked about as the horror movie of all horror movies it was one of the first movies that showed beings or ghosts or spirits not only be able to make their way from their dimension into our dimension but they also possess the power to kidnap us and snatch us back into their world or their dimension it was a terrifying thought and even more terrifying when you watched it on screen and audiences ate it up. The movie was a smash hit, an instant classic, and it was absolutely a horror movie connoisseur's wet dream. But then, while everybody was giddy and happy to be scared, something started happening that had audience members sitting up there with their hair blue back. And that was the fact that creepy and horrific things started to befall some of the cast members of this movie. Not only the cast members, uh, some of the production workers on this movie. So people started to wonder if Poltergeist was much more more than a movie based on spirit and started to wonder if those spirits were actually roaming the real earth and if that movie itself was cursed. And one of the first people that was rumored to experience the effects of this haunted movie was Dominique Dunn. Now y'all already know what time it is. It's time for what? The scandal child. The scandal. Let's go ahead and dive into it. Now, Dominique Dunn's crown accomplishment in 1981 might have been getting a starring role in the Poltergeist movie, but there was also something else in her life that was picking up as well. And that was her association with Hollywood A-listers. Now that she was in an up and coming huge movie and started to make a name for herself, she began to be invited to all of these big parties, parties where she could go and show herself and also make connections 
connection. But when she attended a party at the famous Nouveau restaurant Ma Maison, it wasn't a Hollywood player that she made a connection with. It instead was a handsome, very intelligent 28-year-old sous chef named John Sweeney. And John Sweeney wasn't at all part of the circle that Dominique was used to associating with. He was actually from a small Pennsylvania coal town. You know, he had a father that used to drink all day and all night and his father was very abusive. But you would never be able to tell that because John Sweeney had grown up to totally distance himself from that part of his life. He had created a brand new persona and when Dominique met him, he laid out a full display of charm. He talked to her about how he was very interested in animals. He also talked about his dream to go to Europe and how he loved European history. And for good measure, he told Dominique how he was interested in the artistic side of life. Everything that Hollywood was about. And all of this, everything that John Sweeney was saying flattered Dominique because everything he was saying matched all of her interests to a T. And after this night, you could not convince Dominique that John Sweeney was not the man for her. Baby, she believed that he was sent from the heavens. She loved the way that he was so suave, but also so down to earth. She also liked the fact that he was seven years older than her. You know, she was only 21 years old, he was 28. He seemed grown and sophisticated and also like he could probably take care of her and lead her. And so Dominique fell so deeply for John after this one night. Gossip claims within three weeks, she was telling her mother that she was moving out of the family home with her and she was going to go rent her own house so she and John could live together as a family. When her mother Ellen warned Dominique to proceed with caution, Dominique instead threw caution to the wind and she hurriedly rented a house so she and John could live together. Unfortunately for Dominique though, her mother's caution is something she should have heeded because John Sweeney was not who she thought he would. In truth, John Sweeney was a person who craved what Dominique possessed naturally. He craved a gateway into Hollywood. You know, he wanted to be accepted himself by all of these celebrities. And another thing that Dominique didn't know about John Sweeney is that he had a terrible history of abusing women. Rumor has it, at the time John got with Dominique, there was a rumor circulating about him in a past relationship with a girl named Lillian. Per the rumor, John love-bombed Lillian just like he was doing Dominique now, and when he and Lillian got together as a couple, he totally changed. Anytime Lillian would say anything that he disagreed with, he would lash out on her. Baby, the folks say that this boy was so brutal over the course of his relationship with Lillian, which only lasted like one year. John had beat Lillian up 10 times. Lillian was put in the hospital two times. And this ain't just no going to the hospital to check up on a black eye. No, honey, Lillian had to stay in the hospital a total of 10 days. She had a collapsed lung. She had had a broken nose, she had a perforated eardrum, and those are just the major injuries. So yeah, clearly John Sweeney was a monster. But even though some people knew the story of John Sweeney and Lillian Pierce, Dominique had no idea of the story. And apparently nobody around her had any idea either. But once she and John Sweeney moved in together, it wasn't long before Dominique would find out. The folks say that John Sweeney changed after only about two weeks. Said that Dominique found herself having to answer a questionnaire of all of his questions whenever she tried to leave the house. If he deemed any of her answers unsatisfactory, she would not be permitted to leave the house. Rumor has it that anytime she tried to stand her ground or stand on her uh, word, John would fly into a rage. He would grab Dominique and throw her on the floor. Then he would start throwing like vases and pictures and tearing things down off the wall, just would fly into a rage. And at first, Dominique thought John's temper tantrums would just be maybe a one-time thing or really she thought that maybe she could quell his temper. But that was not so and his behavior progressed so terribly that after a while Dominique started running away from their home and going back to stay with her mother. But every time she went to her mother's house, John would be on the phone calling her the next day, you know, apologizing, swearing that he would never do it again and coaxing her to come back home, which Dominique would do. But honey, come August 27th, 1982, 
1992, Dominique found out just where John was headed with his anger. Rumor has it that she and John had got into it again over his possessiveness because um, allegedly they argued all the doggone time. So they got into it again. And this time when Dominique was like, you know, I'm through with this. I'm not listening to this. I'm about to go to my mama's house. Baby, them folks say when that girl walked off, John grabbed her behind by the back of her head, kind of palmed her head like this took her hair and yanked her down to the ground. Honey said Dominique looked up at his hands and all her hair was in John's uh, grip. That boy had ripped that girl's hair out down to the scalp. And baby, Dominique was probably looking like Cynthia by the head. But I tell you one thing, her tail got away that day. The folks say that somehow she was able to get up and outrun John. And she ran out to her car and she went like she always did to her mother's house. But John was so infuriated that he jumped in his own car and followed Dominique to her mother's house. And when he got there, uh, the rumor says that he was beating all on the door, you know, banging on the windows, threatening to bust the window out, telling Dominique that she needed to come home with him. Dominique, as well as her mother Ellen, were absolutely terrified. And finally, Ellen just yelled out, you know, I'm going to call the police. And John Sweeney ended up leaving. After he'd left, Dominique stayed at her mother's house for probably the next two or three days. But after a while, John Sweeney started to call the house, begging Dominique to come home. The story says that Ellen begged her daughter not to return to John Sweeney, but Dominique loved him and so she ended up going back home. And allegedly when Dominique went back home, it looked like her decision wasn't so bad. Because gossip claims John ceased putting his hands on her. It said that he and Dominique would still argue, but now John was basically working on his anger. You know, if he got too riled up, he would walk away. So Dominique started to settle in, she started to get back comfortable, and she started to get back trusting. But this was a mistake because not not even three weeks later, John Sweeney was back to his old tricks and baby, he did not hold back at all. I don't know what he and Dominique were arguing about. I don't know how it got started. All I know is that this fight was brutal. This man put the hands on Dominique, like for real. Child, listen, the folks say that she was beat to a pulp. And what's worse is the day after this beating, Dominique had to go film. This beating wouldn't tarnish or affect her acting the next day at all. You know why? Because the role that she was playing was the role of a young lady who had been abused. The TV show was called Hill Street Blues and got some claims when Dominique showed up to the set. The makeup and effects department were basically whispering to each other that they didn't even have to do any work on Dominique's face, you know? They said they didn't have to put any prosthetics or special effects to make her look like she had gotten beaten up because her regular face showed the bruises from the night before. But even after this so-called episode, Dominique did not leave. And this set the stage for one of the most horrific nights of her life, which happened on September the 26th, 1982. The folks say that Dominique and John Sweeney were both at home lying in the bed talking and watching TV and also Dominique had a friend staying over and that friend was alleged to be in the front room or maybe even in her bedroom and the friend is just chilling and suddenly she hears a thud coming from Dominique's room. It sounds like something very heavy has fallen to the floor and at first the friend doesn't hear anything else after that but soon she starts to hear scratching noises, sounding like somebody is rubbing something or scratching something against the floor. It probably sounded like this. Something like that, but harder. And at first the friend doesn't pay it much mind because yes, that is strange, but you know, she doesn't hear any screaming, any yelling, anything that would really have a cause for concern. But then along with that scraping or scratching noise, she starts to hear several thuds on the floor as well. So now the friend is concerned. And so she ends up going to Dominique's room and knocking on the door. Nobody says anything, but the noises are still going on. And so she ends up opening the door. And I know Dominique was thanking the good Good Lord that she did. Because turns out that scraping, scratching, and thudding noise was coming from Dominique. It was her feet and hands kind of beating and scratching at the floor because she was trying to maneuver herself out of John Sweeney's grip around her neck. He was throttling her and he was choking her. So when the friend sees this horrible sight, she either tries to fight John Sweeney off of Dominique or John Sweeney sees the friend and he lets the grip go by himself. Sources differ. But whatever the case, 
when he lets go of Dominique, she gets up, pushes him away, and she runs and grabs her friend by the hand and they run into the friend's room. John Sweeney comes immediately knocking, banging at the door, kicking on the door, uh, screaming for Dominique to come out and go to bed with him, telling her that he really didn't mean it and telling her friend that it's not what it looked like. Sir, how can you even say that? How can you tell me that it's not what it looked like and I just walked in on you uh, strangling my friend? But anyways, that is what he was saying. Well, as John Sweeney gets angrier and angrier and his threats get more and more aggressive, Dominique feels like the only way that she can quell him is by coming out and going to bed with him. So that is what she does. But while they are lying down in the bed, Dominique says she needs to use the bathroom. So she gets up, she goes to the bathroom, but on her way, she sneakily grabs her car key. And so when she gets in the bathroom, as soon as she turns around to lock the door, she lifts up a window in the bathroom and she scrambles out of the window into her car. She, of course, is headed to her mother's house. So she cranks up the car, she puts it in gear, and when she looks back to back up, John Sweeney is standing behind the car. Baby, I'm telling you, this had to feel like something from a horror movie. That man was standing behind that doggone car and would not move. And he's fussing at Dominique and telling her, you know, come back in the house. Where are you going? What do you think you're doing? And Dominique is like, you know what, forget this. So she starts to back up anyway. And John Sweeney jumps on top of the car. This man is on top of the car while Dominique is driving, looking like every 90s action movie. And the whole time he is banging on the roof, he is banging on the windshield, uh, the back windshield. He's just banging and screaming and fussing. Well, they had probably gotten about a third of a mile away from the house. And Dominique actually starts to slow down and she brings the car to a stop. And so John Sweeney, feeling like he's finally convince Dominique to stop and let him get in the car and go back home and all that good stuff uh, jumps off the roof but as soon as he does Dominique puts the car back in drive and takes off to her mama's house. Allegedly John Sweeney shows up at her mother's house again that night. He's acting crazy once again banging on the doors and the windows and uh, once again he ended up leaving because her mom said that she was going to call the police. Well after this crazy night Dominique was finally finished. She was through with this crazy man and so she continues to stay at her mother's house for a long period of time but um almost every day John Sweeney is calling you know begging and pleading and fussing at her to come back to him and gossip claims that he also may have resorted to kind of stalking her you know what I mean kind of parking down the street and keeping eyes on her mother's house so he could see her movement and I say this because gossip claims that sometimes Dominique would leave her mother's house and go stay around with different friends just trying to get away from John Sweeney and it was actually from one of these friends houses that that she picked up the phone and she called John Sweeney herself and she told him that she needed to talk to him you know let's have a conversation and during that conversation she straight up told him that it was over you know she couldn't live like this she told him that he did not love her he was obsessed with her and she didn't want to live like this anymore so the relationship was done John does what he always does cries and begs and all of that good stuff but Dominique sticks to her word it's over with and on top of this Dominique also asked John you know since it's over I need you to move out of the house that I'm renting. So I'll say maybe it was a total of two and a half to three weeks after this crazy episode that John Sweeney does move out of the house. And so Dominique moves back into the house and she changes her lock and she slowly but surely just gets back to her normal life. And her normal life now included a leading role that she had just gotten in a uh, miniseries called V. And rumor has it that this is the role that Dominique was preparing for when she ended up calling actor David Packer, who also was going to star in this episode with her, she ended up calling him over to her home so they could rehearse the lines. So Dominique and David Packer are rehearsing the lines, reading the lines, and uh, everything is going good, but then suddenly there is a knock on the door. Uh, Dominique goes to the door, and there is John Sweeney standing on the porch. Well, Dominique does not go outside to talk to John, but she does stand there and talk to him between the screen door. And John Sweeney is just being as sweet as he can be and he is begging Dominique to come back to him. Dominique continuously tells him no, you know, we are just done. I can't do this anymore. Well, after a while, John Sweeney tells Dominique, you know what? 
I accept it. I accept it now, you know, it is over between us. I get it. Then he starts to say something like, you know, Dominique, I'm going to leave you alone. But the way that you're treating me right now, like talking to me through a screen door, like you can't be close to me, like that really hurts. You know, that really hurts my feelings. We had something deeply. And so for you to just kind of shut me out like this is just cold. And some people say he started to maybe coax Dominique to maybe come outside and give him a final hug, you know, or come outside so they can say their final words. Whatever he said or didn't say, she did end up coming outside on the porch. Well, when she got on the porch, John Sweeney quickly went from, oh, I accept this breakup, you know, everything is cool. He quickly went from that back to, why can't we be together? I need you. I love you. And so he and Dominique start to argue again. And then finally, Dominique is like, you know what? This is just too much. I can't do this. And so she turns around to go in the house. And that's when John Sweeney yanks her by the arm and drags her over to where the bushes are. When he gets to the bushes, Gossip claims that he slaps her a number of times and then gets her down on the ground. And then he gets on top of her and throttles her and starts to strangle her. Now, while all this is going on, the actor, David Packer, who is still inside of the house, uh, later said that he heard Dominique get slapped and he heard some uh, yelling type moaning sounds. And so he ended up calling the police, calling 911. And 911 told him that Dominique lived too far out. It wasn't their jurisdiction, so they were not coming. And David Packer admitted that he was too frightened to go help Dominique himself. He was so scared that John Sweeney was going to come in the house and come after him that he ended up leaving the house through the back door, trying to avoid being seen by John Sweeney. Well, those bushes, I suppose, kind of wrapped around the side of the house because to David Packer's surprise, once he got outside and started trying to run, he was basically almost face to face with John Sweeney. And he said that when John Sweeney saw him, the John started to be like, call the police, you know, call the police. She's hurting. I can't believe I did this to her. I choked her please call the police and David Packer doesn't try to explain that he's already tried to call the police you know he just runs back in the house and he calls the police again and this time he tells the police that Dominique is laying on the ground and that she's unresponsive and that her ex-boyfriend is out here saying that he has strangled her so after this second phone call the police finally does come to Dominique's house and when they get there they see John Sweeney standing over Dominique and he's still crying you know he's still saying he can't believe what he did to her he's so sorry he also tells the police that he has now taken an overdose of medication and that he's trying to take himself off the planet. So the emergency services get there. They take Dominique to the hospital where she is in a coma. They take John Sweeney to the hospital to try to save his life and then find out this man ain't got nothing in his system. Certainly not any medication that would seem like he was trying to take himself off the planet. So he had lied pretty much to try to keep himself from being transported directly to jail. Well, after they found out that all of this was a lie and he hadn't taken any medication, he was transported to jail and he was charged with attempted murder. Well, Dominique Dunn never pulled out of her coma. And five days later, on November the 4th, 1982, she passed away at the age of 22. And John Sweeney's charges were upgraded to murder. And I'm not going to go through the whole trial because that's basically a video on its own, but but I will tell you that that doggone trial was the most misogynistic thing that I have ever seen. Baby, the whole doggone trial was not about finding John Sweeney guilty of murder. It was more about what Dominique had done to drive John Sweeney to murder her. I mean, let me tell you just a little bit just how messy this thing was, honey. Uh, gossip claims that uh, John's ex-girlfriend Lillian Pierce was even brought in to testify to the courts what John had done to her. And so she told her story, which is the same story that I told you guys earlier about how John put her in the hospital for 10 days, all of that good stuff. And while she was telling the story and in front of everybody that was present, John Sweeney jumped up out of his seat, put his hand up and started to try to run and go for Lillian Pierce in front of everybody. The jury, the audience, the judge, everybody, child. It took six men to sit this boy back down in his seat. That's just how powerful his rage was. And guess what his lawyer and the judge said after this outburst? They had the nerve to apologize to the court for John's behavior and also apologize to John, telling him that they were sorry that he behaved that way but, you know, they could see how Lillian's testimony would kind of get him riled up, would kind of enrage him. Because 
because it was just too much to bear that this lady was speaking against his character the way she was. So they could, you know, they could understand. They could understand why he would get so enraged and try to go after her. A big farce. Big farce, baby. I'm talking about a huge farce. And what was even more unbelievable is that after everything was said and done, this man only got six years. Six years years. And cha, the messy folks say that the man only served four, with some of the even messier folks saying that the man actually got out after serving only two years. Listen, I don't know who John Sweeney truly was, what kind of connections he truly had, or magic powers or whatever, but he absolutely swayed that court, especially that judge. Dominique's family and friends and even the local community were so enraged and so much in disbelief, especially Dominique's father, uh, Dominique Dunn, he was so enraged that he started to dig into the background of everybody who had anything to do with giving John Sweeney this light sentence. And when it came to the judge, who was named Burton S. Katz, Dominic found out that just a few weeks earlier, this same judge, Judge Katz, has sentenced a man to five years for robbing a flower shop. And this was not even a violent robbery. I don't even know if that person even had a gun. Uh, but this judge has sentenced him to five years for robbing a flower shop. But then a few weeks later, you give John Sweeney only six years for actually committing a murder? He also found out that the attorney, Michael Anderson, had asked Judge Katz to uh, put a gag order on all of the newspapers. So the newspapers couldn't really spill the real detail of what was happening in the courts and people's testimonies. And in the end, Dominic's revelations of what this lawyer and Judge Katz were doing um, eventually got Judge Katz removed from the bench because he had not only acted uh, ridiculous in this case, there were other cases where he would be cool with one of the lawyers and he would use all of his judge powers to sway the whole courtroom in the favor of that lawyer that he was cool with. And so like I said, when all of these cases were researched, uh, Judge Katz was basically dismissed from the bench. But Dominic did not stop there. His real target was John Sweeney. And so when John Sweeney ended up getting out after only serving a few years, uh, he just went back to life like everything was cool. You know, got him a job, had his car, had his house. And so Dominic promptly called up the job where John Sweeney worked and let them know, hey, did you know that you you employ a murderer? Did you know that the guy that's working for you, John Sweeney, do you know that he killed somebody, my daughter? And so the restaurants would end up firing John Sweeney. And allegedly Dominic did this about two or three times before John Sweeney ended up going by an alias and kind of changing his name, trying to get away from uh, Dominic's private investigators and research. And under his new name, Gossip claims that he ended up meeting a girl and getting engaged to marry this girl. But Dominic ended up finding out where John Sweeney had moved to and what his alias was. And when Dominic learned that John Sweeney was about to marry another girl, he called that girl's father and that girl to tell her that she didn't need to marry this guy. This guy was abusive, he was crazy, and that he had killed his daughter. And so luckily that girl called off the engagement. And so this really started to be a cat and mouse game where Dominic was basically chasing down John Sweeney wherever he went and trying to ruin his life. But after a while, Dominic said, Said he was just tired of the whole thing. You know what I mean? He kind of felt like this was controlling his life. So after maybe about five or 10 years of doing this, he ended up just stopping for good. But Dominic's skills of investigations and uh, research was so good that he ended up being offered his own television show that he would host. And that television show was called Power, Privilege, and Justice, which was a true crime show. And some of you probably watched this show. Remember this show? Well, that was Dominic Dunn, Dominic Dunn's father. Now, although Dominic Dunn ended up giving up tracking down John Sweeney, somebody should have kept on tracking his behind down because John Sweeney Sweeney was said to never have learned his lesson. Rumor has it that in the year 2000, a girl that he was dating ended up filing a police report. And she said that she and John were at a hotel and they got to arguing in the lobby. And I'm guessing nobody was in the lobby at that time because she went on to say that John ended up grabbing her by her ponytail and kind of yanking her and dragging her across the floor. Said that he dragged her all the way into the elevator and to their room. And when they got to the room, he allegedly filled the bathroom 
bathtub up with water and shoved her head in the water holding her down. Then he picked her up and slammed her into a wall and got on top of her and throttled her and started choking her. Allegedly, they were interrupted by a bellhop or room service or some doggone body and that is the way that she ended up getting away from John Sweeney. And so clearly at that time, John Sweeney had not learned anything. He had not changed and he was still a psychopath. As of today, nobody knows where John Sweeney is. It's alleged that he changed his uh, name once again and he moved far, far away. So I don't even know if he's in another country. I don't know what the man is doing. But to wrap things up, Dominique Dunn was only 22 years old when she passed away. Her case has definitely gone down as one of the most uh, tragic Hollywood cases, but also one of the most tragic cases of domestic abuse where she received no justice in in the end. It's a lot like what Spade Cooley did to his wife and at the end he kind of just skedaddled through prison like everything was all good. So it's really just a mess and, and it really drives home the point that bad things can happen to really anybody. Nobody is exempt from crazy. And now I have to say that this is the end of the old Hollywood scandalous story of Mrs. Dominique Dunn. If you guys enjoyed it please like it. Um, If you are new here please subscribe. If you've been sitting on the bench go ahead and subscribe. Stop being messy. That's my job. But anyways, I love y'all so much. I'll be back with another video soon. Bye.